Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last chapter. The entire book is about living, looking under the sun. Remember, now thy creator. Not evolution. God. In the days of thy youth. Well, one thing, the United States of America had been teaching their youth about evolution and not the creator. And you're going to continue to say we're a Christian nation. We're one nation under God, but they don't even have the God, the creator. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The longer you live, the worse it's going to get. And there's not many evil days during the youth. But as you get older, as you get older, you're going to reap and sow what you've done as a child. But you don't think about that when you're growing up. I mean, life is just dragging out. Then, I don't know what age it is, and phew, it just slides right along, and you're paying for all the sins of growing up. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not dark, and you're still alive, nor the clouds return after the, after the rain. Still alive. Now, verses 3 to 7 is a passage that you can apply to aging, getting old. <clears throat> In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, your legs, your legs get wobbly. And one of the hardest things of elderly people is they fall. And that's no joke. And the strong men shall bow themselves. That's your back. And there's a lot of old aging people where they're bent over. Jesus met a woman like that, and that was because of the devil. But age will have your back to, to slump over. And the grinders, your teeth. That's the only place grinders shows up in the Bible. Your teeth cease. Because they are few. You start losing your teeth. And those that look out of the windows, your glasses, your eyes, be darkened. Now they didn't have glasses then. The windows would be the eyes. And many a time, the saints of God, by reason of age, their eyes were dim. They could not see. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. They stay inside. When the sound of the grinding is low, you have little appetite. You don't eat much. Grinding in the grinders of verse 3. You don't eat much. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. He gets early risers. Wakes up early. And all the doors of music shall be brought low. That can apply two ways. Little sounds. Not hearing much. The ears are going dim. Or the ears are going deaf. Or they don't want to sing. They don't want to sing. When they shall be afraid of that which is nigh. Fears. Anxieties. That which is high. Afraid of heights. And fears shall be in the way. Anxieties. This is the characteristics of somebody getting old. 
and now a horse, I mean, excuse me, and the almond tree shall flourish. The white almond tree, your hair is growing white and gray. And the grasshopper shall be a burden, the little things. The little tiny things are burdens. And the desire shall fail. The lust is gone. And they have names for it. Because men go to the, his long home, the grave. And the mourners go about the streets. Funeral. Or ever the silver cord be loose. Or the golden bowl be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. They're watered tankers. Reservoirs. There's no more use if they're broken. Untied. Loose. Then shall the dust return to the earth. That's us. We're dust. Man is dust. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And we've already looked at that spirit before. In chapter 3, verse 21. That's death. He starts off the chapter of young. He goes through getting old, getting aged, and goes right to the grave. In 12 ch chapters, vanity of vanities, emptiness of emptiness, nothing of nothing, save the preacher. As far as life under the sun, all is vanity. Death calls all. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. And we've read them. People listen to Solomon. And people in the church, the Christians today don't listen. The preacher sought, still looking, to find out acceptable words. And that which was written was upright. Even the words of truth. Oh, that would have been Moses. Which he disobeyed Moses' words. With the gold and the silver and the horses in Egypt and the wives. The words of the wise are as golds. It's a long stick with a pointed head. It's for prodding animals. Get animals moving in the right direction to count the animals. It's a useful tool. As nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Nails hold things together, which are given from one shepherd. Well, we got the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And further, by these, my son. Man, that's the whole context of the book of Proverbs, my son. And he's writing to Rehoboam. Rehoboam, don't try to go live the good life. Don't try to sow your, I've done it, son. And here's the, here's the complete outcast of living life to the fullest. It's vanity. Be admonished. Making many books, there is no end. John said that about the life of Jesus. And much study is weary, weariness of the flesh. All right. What's Paul tell you to do? He says, study show thyself for food done to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Is there a contradiction? Studying the word of God too much. What was the main foundation of the book of Ecclesiastes? Everything under the sun. We're not. Did we see the word of God in the book of Ecclesiastes? 
So everything that that the book of Ecclesiastes looks at, and the the sciences, the math, the the greenhouses, the orchards, the the getting happy, getting the musicians, getting sad. Everything that that Solomon wrote, he says, you know what? Don't even bother, because it's all vanity. Now, some would say that, oh, much studying the Word of God. Then you got a contradiction of what Paul said. And then look at verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion. We're going to finish the book of Ecclesiastes. Look, let us hear the conclusion. Here is the conclusion of 12 chapters of the whole matter. I've done everything I wanted to do. I did everything I wanted to do. I did everything I wanted to do. And I've done everything I wanted to do with all the money and with all the fame, with everything I've done, whatever I wanted to do, I've done it. Now, here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. He writes in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right. This is not a church age book. And keep his commandments. This is under the law of Solomon. Solomon didn't do that. Three commandments of Solomon for Solomon. Don't multiply gold and silver. Don't go back to Egypt. And don't marry multiple wives. For this is the whole duty of man writing in the law. And he doesn't say of Israel. He says of all men, Israel and Gentiles. Gentiles could come and come and worship at the temple and they could obey the law during the time. It wasn't just necessary for the Jews. The Jews were the light on the hilltop. The salt of the earth. It was that, that golden temple that, that rise upon Jerusalem was to tell the whole world, here is God. And you got Christians today, oh, I let my light shine. You mean your wicked light that you, that you don't confess, you don't read your Bible, you don't go to church regularly, and you don't study your Bible. You're the light of the world? <laughs> I've talked to those people. I let my light shine. Do you tell people about Jesus? I let my light shine. For God, concluding the whole book, for God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The conclusion of everything under the sun since you fear God, and everything you do, even every secret thing you do, God's going to judge you. And for the Christian today, we have, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness where those sins will not be judged. And we have a point where we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We get that new birth. The day that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. All our sins from the past are under the blood. Solomon didn't have that. Come on, listen. If Solomon is a Christian looking forward to Calvary, why didn't he say, put your faith and trust in the Messiah that would die on the tree one day? Tell me one prophet that you say, look forward to the dying Messiah. I mean, the Messiah could have came in any time. But that concludes.